lads and lasses, life is on again. Sing as we go and let the world go by. I, uh, <laughs> so, mmm, been doing a really American style opening to Library is Open for quite a few episodes. I say a few, most of them. All right, all fine, fine, all of them. And uh, this week, um, I've been encouraged to go back to my roots and pay tribute to our Gracie, Gracie Fields there, from uh, the borough of Rochdale, which is my hometown. Uh, if you're not familiar, go and check her out. She's amazing. There's a statue of her in, in Rochdale Town Centre like this. this. And at the moment, there's a dinosaur exhibition on um, with a sort of dinosaur poster prom promotional thing right next to her. So she's like, this. like our Gracie and the Stegosaurus. The couple everybody wanted to happen. <laughs> but hello and welcome to another exciting edition of the library is open. So I hope you brought your library card, lads and lasses. It's like your co-op ration book at the co-op shop. And this week we're talking about quite a slim volume, quite a slim volume, uh, called um, How to Make an American Quilt by Whitney Otto. Can I just have a moment of appreciation for how beautiful that cover is? Look at that. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Look, all different bits and things. And that's really nice. It sort of reminds me of those. You know, um, when you were at school um, and it was like, I don't know, bonfire night or something like that. And you had to like crayon in loads of different colours on paper and then cover it in black crayon. And then you could get like a pair of scissors and scrape out a picture like a bonfire or something like that. I used to love that, but it used to make a right mess. It used to make a right mess of me and it was like stained thing there but you know that's neither here nor there uh, <laughs> so I picked this up on a bit of a whim actually because I was on a bit of a, an older films uh, fest no let's call it like it is I was on a bit of an Anne Bancroft binge uh, who's a fantastic actor also beloved of those vegan guys who are always linked below by the way they're amazing go subscribe check them out if you haven't already if, you're, if they're not the reason you're here to begin with. Um, and we were talking about this the other day, and um, I just think she's wonderful. I think she's wonderful in Torchstone Trilogy with Harvey Feistein. Uh, Night Mother, which is wonderful. Uh, 84 Charing Cross Road, which is what started off the binge. And I'm going to do 84 Charing Cross Road in a video soon. The book, I mean. By Helen Hanf. And... Um, so I was just doing a little search, and I was like, oh, of course she's in How to Make an American Quilt as well. So I rewatched the movie, which is good. It's, it is good. It's not... I was going to say it's not as good as 84 Charing Cross Road then, but that's... You can't really compare the two, can you? I don't think that's a fair comparison. Um, but I was like, oh, okay, I'd be interested to read to read the book then. So the sort of simple precy of the plot, if you will, is that it's about a, a quilting circle in Bakersfield in, well, it's just outside Bakersfield in America. Is that Indiana or is that Maryland? Bakersfield, I'll Google it and find out. Um, and it's about the women who are part of the quilting circle, quite different people and, and they all sort of contribute to these quilts and it's sort of interspersed throughout the stories with instructions on uh, quilt construction and the history of construction of quilts and sort of like women's crafts which I don't like as a phrase but it's kind of important to the plot um, and, and sort of how they've evolved over history and taken in like issues of social justice and so on and so forth and then each chapter between the um between the instructions focuses on one of the women within the circle uh, and and something that's happened to them in their lives they're almost like episodes and some of the episodes play into the work they put into the quilts so um they can be like relationship dramas, uh, dealings with racial prejudice, motherhood, 
friendship, love generally, you know, so on and so forth. Um, so they're almost like a short story collection in a way, in the sense that I feel that although they fit into the narrative as a whole, you could probably remove them and still enjoy them as self-contained stories. Now this was Whitney Otto, as uh, Whitney Otto's uh, <laughs> debut novel, and it was first published in 1991. Um, and the it's quite interesting in terms of how she uses the narrator as narrative device because there is a sort of vague allusion to the fact that she, the person who we're supposed to assume is tying the novel together, is the uh, relative of two of the people in the quilting circle, uh, all of whom are sort of interrelated with one another. So, you know, there's, there's history between them or a familial relationship or an event occurred which one or other of the participants from the other stories were involved in, so on and so forth. Sort of a bit like Crash, I suppose, you know that movie? where the plot lines intertwine and it's it's all very sort of six degrees of separation. Uh, so yeah, she sort of makes use of that narrator, um, but the voice is quite interesting because it's not a confiding voice per se, it's more instructional. And I think that may be what, because, how am I gonna phrase this so it communicates properly? I didn't find this as moving or relatable as I thought I was going to, if that makes any sense. I'll try and expand a little bit on that. Given the themes that are tackled by the book, given my absolute adoration for stories about um, particularly women in times of adversity and, and social and political upheaval, you know, because there's a lot of stuff in here about, like, the antebellum South and slavery and, you know, equal rights and so on and so forth. And also back to, like, women's suffrage and also the colonisation of, um, by, sorry, by the West, um, of, of native lands and stuff. I sort of, I don't know, I expected to be... Well, just more moved, really, by the content. And that's not necessarily a criticism, is it? Because I think the expectation when it comes to experience in any kind of art is only exists to please itself, doesn't it? Um, as the artist Nal Bustamante said, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, I'm not responsible for your experience of my art. Uh, which I think is true. So writers are free to write whatever they want and how we take it is not their concern. I don't mean that in a horrible way, but if they only wrote to please what we wanted to read, we might as well just write our own. So anyway, I'm, I'm der deriving from the point here. Um, there's a sense of attachment a little bit so we're kind of allowed into these women's lives and it's structured very nicely like it all makes sense um, as to why everything's where it is and and how events shape the women and subsequently the um, contributions to the quills that they make but it's it's almost like at one degree of of, of remove, if you will, so it's, it's, it's a bit like a scientist, I suppose, sort of dispassionately studying its subject. And I sort of wonder if maybe that's why it's slightly difficult to not get into, but to crave more. Because I think the best, for me, narrators or characters have 
elements of fallibility or something that we can go, oh, okay, um, that's a, a character flaw or a failing, but it's very human, so it's relatable, we get it. Um, and I think that's point one. And point two, I think, is because the novel is so self-assured, which is lovely, it's really nice, that there is this real level of the author knowing exactly what they're trying to do here and which conclusions they're trying to draw and comparisons and connections and so on and so forth. What it doesn't really leave room for is discovery. Um, now in acting we talk a lot about the power of discovery and performance. I'm aware that this is a novel and not a performance but they're not they're not unconnected. Um, and how that's stimulating in a scene so your characters are constantly on the edge of learning something new or realizing something about themselves and or their situation but it almost feels a little bit like all the discoveries have already been made and what the author is doing is giving us a report on them and the conclusions they've reached but sort of missing out the bit where they get the knowledge that makes them come to that conclusion. Um, which, again, it's not to say that I didn't enjoy this, because I did. Uh, this was a, a, what you'll be familiar with now, as I call my bedtime reads. So I was ploughing through... Ploughing seems negative. I was going through uh, um, another novel, which will probably be the novel I discuss next week. Um, and I was finding that I wanted to spend time on it because it was complex and all over the place. So I wanted to be sort of fully <laughs> compass mentors, well, as much as I'm ever going to be compass mentors, uh, when I was reading it and sort of, you know, maybe read a chapter and then sit with the chapter for a while and sort of reflect on you know, if there was anything I wanted to go back and highlight or think, or just, just think about, really. Um, I think that is important in reading for me. Uh, it's not the text itself, it's also the thinking that it stimulates. You know, and thinking is work. <laughs> it's unpaid work, isn't it? Um, and you have to decide, I suppose, what what imagery and what thoughts are going to stick with you and what you're willing to give time to or space in your mental scape mental scape sounds like a cheap show for sci-fi channel doesn't it mental scape that might be the theme tune i don't know uh so this yeah this was bedtime read so i was sort of going through because it's very easy to read in fairness as well and that's kind of what i want at night I don't really want to be doing critical thinking at, at night. I want I want to just read and enjoy. Um, so I'll give you a quick example, I suppose, of some of the characters in the book. So the um, the first quilters we encounter are Gladdy Joe and Hyacinth. Uh, Gladdy is short for Gladioli, which is the role. The sisters are the roles, um, one of whom is played by Anne Bancroft in the film, which also starts with Nona Ryder, pre-shoplifting, presumably. Um, well, pre-getting caught for shoplifting. Um, and uh, their story is about uh, their relationships with their husbands. Um, Hyacinth's husband is, is dying and... Uh, Gladys' husband and she and he have settled into a sort of amicable friendship as opposed to a marriage in the traditional sense. Um, there's a lot of complications that go on there in terms of um, the sisters' relationships with the two, which become increasingly convoluted. Uh, there's a story about um, a character called Sophia who is into diving and never wants to be tied down and then she ends up meeting this guy and she takes him to where she where she dives off cliffs into water yeah i don't mean like a sort of 
you know, harmy way. She does it into water. Um, and then it's about how she sort of reconciles the idea that what she wanted, or rather what she didn't want for her life, is exactly what she's ended up with. Uh, the third chapter, which is quite interesting, is about um, a character called Constance, who is struggles with the idea of making female friends. They're her, wor they're her words. Um, and also in being stuck in one place because she marries a, a sort of travelling a travelling salesman who um, they never really put down roots per se and it's about how she finally makes a friend who understands her but they're both under it, that, that relationship's under both of their terms um, then there is a character who is uh, married to a man called Dean who becomes not involved in the in the romantic sense necessarily but intimate with Constance of the previous story and it's about how she sort of deals with that feeling of betrayal but is it actually betrayal and so on and so forth um, the final couple deal with um, issues of um, racial prejudice in the South. These are probably the most interesting parts. Um, and it's a character called Anna, who is a, a pregnant and unwed shock horror at 17 and is taken in by Gladie Joe and Hyacinth's parents. And they sort of all grow up together and it's about uh, how they come to relate to one another in in uh, a sort of new configuration of from sort of feeling like a sort of servant master relationship to uh, well friendship I suppose and then the final bit is about um, Anna's daughter Mariana who uh, is cursed she believes with loving too much and also not enough in her relationships with men. And then she becomes a good friend later on of Constance. So you can see that the sort of plots are all interrelated and the issues are, you know, quite skillfully done in terms of, uh, you know, issues don't stand in isolation. So it's, it's clever. But maybe, again, just to bring it back is... Um, Maybe that's, maybe it's clever in advance of itself. And that's why it's slightly harder to relate to it because these journeys have already been started, traversed and in some parts done. So it's kind of a foregone conclusion what happens. And sometimes the excitement really lies in going on that journey with the character. But then again, that's just my opinion, so. What I did like is, particularly at the end, um, Whitney Otto sort of ties it all up by bringing it back to the idea of the quilt again, and she brings in what she calls the crazy quilt, which is a sort of non-patterned quilt that um, uh, represents different elements and interests of each quilter, so you can have sort of like patches of um, and different stories that make it up as opposed to an entirely cohesive story and it is a real thing apparently i had a little google um and what i did quite like was this end bit which sort of really sums up all the disparate elements of the plot and ties them together like thread um it says uh in terms of materials for quilting as for material any old worn or used clothing is fine um Karina Amuri, it's one of the characters, contributes olive drab over and over like a problem she's trying to solve. That's a nice, that's a nice phrase, isn't it? A husband's old shirt is good, or possibly a line of dress buttons affixed, affixed to a patch to look like a string of pearls. Maybe the pearls were given to you as a St. Valentine's Day gift when you were estranged from your man, or, or maybe it's the song that stays with you. 
Or perhaps you're the gardener of the most elegant garden in all the surrounding countries. Or you like Kandinsky or Bach or Mondrian. Or maybe a boy from Chicago fell in love with you on a cattle ranch one summer so many years ago that it all seems like a dream to you now. Remember, you do not need to tell anyone what your contributions mean. And it's more than likely they will hold meaning for you alone anyway. Do not explain. This is your right. And that's the ending of the book, really, which it sort of sums it all up for you, but without really giving any spoilers in terms of in terms of what happens. So would I recommend this? Yeah. Depends what you're after. Depends what you're after. It's it's nice. Does that sound like a read? <laughs> Slightly. Um, it's gentle and it's very readable in the sense that you can go, oh, okay, I've got a half hour train journey, I can get through a chapter of this with relative ease, it's fine. Um, and I suppose the social, social history in the background is also useful. It sort of complements it. In fact, maybe that's why it's there actually, because in and of themselves, the stories are lovely, but they don't have that connection that makes us go, ah, that's why it's here, that's why that's there, that's why they know them, and so on and so forth. So, uh, as our Gracie would say, it were all eat, it were all eat. <laughs> so yeah, that was this week's book, How to Make an American Quilt by Whitney Otto. Um, do let me know if you have seen the film as well. I found the film all right. I'm going to rewatch it actually in light of having finished the book and just see what differences and similarities are there and, and actually maybe decide which I prefer. We'll see. Uh, so that's it for this week's episode. Uh, throw me some comments down below. Um, don't read my hair. I know it looks like a ski slope today. Sort of kicky. A kicky beret. Um, and next week's book as per usual as well as the upcoming schedule is listed down in the description so i shall now bid you adieu in true gracie rochdale fashion at the co-op shop goodbye lads and lasses library's closed again but come back soon and don't forget your library card Hee -hee. take care lots of love Mwah. <laughs>